From Cheney's extra early debut to swapping Liet Kynes' gender. I don't think it matters that Kynes in the book is a man. Here are the major differences between the book and movie. Before we get into all the things cut, let's talk about the new additions, specifically Cheney. I don't know, I was immersed very yeah, early. Really. If you read the novel, you'll know that she features quite heavily from the halfway point, but you don't really get to know much about her before then. However, in the movie, she appears in almost all of Paul's visions, and we even get to see more of her before the credits roll. So why was her arrival pushed earlier than expected? That's purely down to Zendaya. In an interview, the director confirmed this, saying, as the movie was evolving, Cheney just kept growing and growing because I just was fascinated by Zendaya and her presence and how magnetic she was. Look, Denis isn't wrong because Zendaya did steal the show whenever she appeared on screen. So, hey, everyone kind of won by changing things here, right? Another change made for the movie involved Liet Kynes. In the book, Kynes is the imperial planetologist of the planet Arrakis and plays a central figure in the story, in more ways than one. The film keeps this all intact. However, Kynes is gender swapped for the narrative here. While it shouldn't have a significant change in the overall story arc of the character, it was a surprising twist nonetheless. So, why was the decision made to change Kynes' gender? In a cast interview, Sharon Duncan Brewster, who plays the character, explained, As far as Denis was concerned, it was all about concentrating on the essence of this person, not the fact that this person was a man. So that's what we went with first. She added that the most important thing was what the character stood for, and not whether it was male or female. This is somebody who understands all these worlds and moves in between each and every one. It's an interesting perspective, especially since most fans will recognize the character as male from the novel and previous adaptations. That being said, variety is the spice of life, and in Dune, spice is everything. So why not? It's next to impossible to create a beat-for-beat -beat adaptation of a book. If you did, you'd need a running time of a couple of days at least, and that might be a bit too avant-garde for even Hollywood. In terms of Dune, this meant that certain characters had to be cut or de-emphasized, as director Denis Villeneuve did. One of the most surprising changes was to Peter de Vries, who served under Baron Harkonnen. While the character received a decent amount of screen time and lines compared to many others, he wasn't as prominent as he was in previous adaptations or the the novel. And neither was Thufir Hawat. Turns out they might have had larger roles before, but they were significantly cut in the rewrites to save some time. Discussing the changes to his original script, screenwriter Eric Roth told the LA Times, I gave Denis a very full script that was probably too long and a little too fanciful in some areas. He did what all good directors do. He edited it and also did his own writing to bring it down to size. Even though Peter and Hawat's roles were reduced, they still made the cut, unlike one big character that was omitted entirely. If you ever watched David Lynch's Dune, you'll be all too familiar with Fade Rotha Harkonnen, portrayed by musician Sting. As the Baron's youngest nephew, he was just as cruel and ruthless as his despicable uncle. Plus, it was also a pretty faithful adaptation of the character from Frank Herbert's iconic novel. Surprisingly, Fade Rotha was nowhere to be found in the new movie, but his elder brother Glossu Raban was ever-present in the wings. It's a weird omission, considering the character's prominence in the novels and other adaptations. However, it might be a smart choice to keep him hidden. For now. With Dune Part 2 still to come, well, hopefully, new characters will be introduced, and it's likely that Fade Rotha will be part of this batch. His arrival could see tension mounting between him and his brother, who hopes to become the Baron's heir. However, Dune readers will know that the Baron favors his youngest nephew, who shares more than a few common and deadly traits with him. So in this instance, maybe the change was for the better, and Fade Rotha's character arc will shine in the sequel. Characters weren't the only things excluded in the new Dune movie, though. There were a few scenes from the novel that didn't make the cut. Pardon the pun. Fans of Gurney Halleck were particularly upset that they didn't get to see him play the balisette, the fabled nine-stringed musical instrument. Why? He's a musician. Thanks for the reminder, Josh. Well, as it so happens, a scene was actually filmed with Josh Brolin, but it wasn't included in the final movie, and the director was just as torn up about it as the rest of us. My man. Speaking to Slash Film, Denise said the following, There's one thing that it's painful for me. It's Gurney Halleck's Balisette. It's something that I shot. It's something that exists. Josh was awesome, but for several reasons, I was not able to put it in part one. With Dune being well over two and a half hours, it makes sense that some scenes would end up on the cutting room floor. The good news here is that it does exist, so it could find its way into part two, or even a director's cut in the future. Because everyone knows that there's a lot more footage sitting in a storage room somewhere. While it might not 
not have been a scene. There was an important subplot that the Dune films skated over entirely, but it was a fundamental part of the book and set the foundation for what was to come. The attack of the Hunter Seeker on Paul was a turning point in the story, as it put everyone on high alert that the enemy was out to get the House Atreides. In the film, everyone was up in arms that it happened, but they were more concerned with finding the culprits responsible for it. The book, though, questioned if there was a traitor in the midst, which actually makes a lot of sense. It raised a lot of suspicion and had the characters questioning each other and who could be trusted. It also served as a foreshadowing, since we all know now that Dr. Yue ended up being the traitor. Screenwriter Eric Roth explained to the LA Times why this and similar subplots didn't make the final cut. He said, You couldn't have everything. It would be an eight-hour movie. You have to tell what you consider the best parts of it, the most emotional and adventurous and curious, all the things that make it interesting. The movie probably avoided this particular subplot as it would have felt too much like a telegraph of what was to come. Instead of planting the seeds of doubt in the audience's mind, it decided to let us make our minds up about it ourselves. Considering the medium, it was probably a wise choice to do so, wouldn't you say? Undoubtedly, Dune is Paul's story. He's the central hero, and it's about his journey to finding out who he really is. That said, the film made this crystal clear by flinging most of the other characters to the periphery. Inside, I was crying like a little bit. You'd argue that Paul is the one with the most screen time in the movie, including all those delightful cinematic slow-mo shots. But in the book, there are many chapters where he doesn't figure as we get to find out more about the other characters and their specific backstories. The director admits that it was entirely deliberate to make Paul the focus of the movie here. He told the LA Times, We tried in this one to stay as close as possible to Paul's experience. Then, in the second one, I will have time to develop more characters that were left aside a little bit. Well, Denis, we'll definitely be waiting with bated breath for the sequel. So come on and just announce it already! If you have sandworms on the brain, you'll definitely need to check out our video about all of Dune's behind-the-scenes secrets. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and stay awesome!